Hey, Eric, uh, you know what's really too bad? I'm out of Bisquick. <laughs> You're out of Bisquick. Uh, that is too bad. You know, everybody should have Bisquick. Even my mom uh, had Bisquick, and, and she was uh, taught to make biscuits from a young age, although they were bad Western Idaho biscuits. But uh, what's too bad is that some pair of geniuses didn't predict that the Knicks would miss the playoffs a while ago. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's do a flashback. <laughs> the Knicks are going to make the playoffs. They're going to get beaten by the Hawks. You couldn't beat the Hawks. This is the Atlanta Hawks. Not once, not second seed, not third seed. You're not even the AFC. Your, Will, your Willis Reed mamas can't even get you in the playoffs. Phil can't get you in the playoffs. Mike Woodson couldn't get you in the playoffs. J.R. Smith and his tattoos. You can't get, get in the playoffs with our sloppy second cast-off coach that you brought in specifically you, to coach defense. You missed the New York Knicks missed the playoffs with oh, a 35 no. of the Atlanta Hawks, who none of whom, with the exception of Jeff Teague, I believe was a starter in the league three years ago. Yeah. How, how many all-stars do y'all have? <laughs> oh, well, let, let's run through them. Uh, Mello. Mello. Amari. So he's the best natural scorer in the league. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. Mello. Oh, he has his own commercial. Okay, that's probably true. Mello is one of the great best scorers in the league. Uh, Amari, who at one Amari, point was a good player. Amari was a beat. Remember we used to have conversations about who's better, Amari or Tim Duncan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember then when you used yeah, to say Yeah, why would you say that about Amari? Why <laughs> would you Tim say Duncan that? Really better. I don't know what you're talking about. Amari Stoudemire. I think Chandler's made an all-star team. Chandler. Oh, yeah. He was the starter at center when they used to have centers on the all-star team. So here's the question. Name the Atlanta Hawks all-stars. Didn't Millsap make the team this year? Oh, yeah, that's right. Millsap did make the team. That's right. wasn't, he our, wasn't he our token? He was. It's, like, it's nice Millsap, that y'all won so gay. Millsap, Millsap had it's a nice that y'all won so gay. That's what he but y'all, y'all have a – isn't Millsap, Millsap a coach? <laughs> isn't he a country singer from the 1970s? <laughs> I thought it was your porno name. I think Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Millsap was a – shout out to the 1970s, y'all. But here's another prediction. So I told you the Knicks would make the playoffs. Well, like, you asked me whether the Knicks would make the playoffs, and I said no. So no, let no. me so, – look at that. Oh, I'm so smart. I'm too sexy for my shirt. All right. Here's another prediction. The Hawks will take the Pacers to seven games. I, I think that's not impossible. It, it's weird because... Cyrus says they beat the Hawks, beat them in six. What's, what's funny is that is that the the Heat have decided now that they don't want the top seed. It's the smart choice. It is you the smart avoid, choice. You avoid the Bulls and Brooklyn. Exactly. Yes. Who wants the one seed? No. Yeah. So, well, they actually, yeah, it's true. My my prediction is still alive. I said the Pacers would lose to the Bulls in the second round. Back before the Bulls kind of went on this huge run is what I said, and I still believe that. And it'll be a Bulls. Was, it, was it Cyrus who said that the Hawks are going to the Hawks? Cyrus gonna... says the Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's ridiculous. If Cyrus is right, I will buy him a steak dinner. For Mo Charlie. Does Cyrus eat steak? I will buy him whatever it is he eats for Mo Charlie. I mean, I don't know. He could. I just don't know. He, I, he's, I, he's a very small man to be eating steak. He's a he he's a tall giant in his community. I guess I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Cyrus was what community? Cyrus, was, Cyrus was Cyrus was pound for pound one of the best debaters you'll ever see. I wish I had videotape of Cyrus's last CETA Nationals award ceremony. Where when he went to get his speaker award, Regina no, Summers. No, no, don't do it. She, no, I'm not gonna say what she said. No, I'm not gonna say what she said. Shout out to Regina Summers, wherever you are. Jumped up on a chair and professed some positive emotions for Cyrus, and then pretended to faint dead away on the floor. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. How did you say that? Someone's got a video of it somewhere. It no, I don't think anyone had a video of it. But oh, oh Cyrus, okay. Cyrus, I love you, my brother, but. That, that's a little excessive. Yeah, a little excessive. Uh, I, I would love to see. I, I think it's not impossible for the Hawks to take the Pacers. The Pacers have not been looking. Well, first of all, they've been looking really inconsistently lately. Are you really? And, and they won like a couple of games, and people are like, oh, they're back. It's all better now. What? Wait, wait, wait. What, what have the Pacers ever done that makes you think that that's definitely true? No, no, no. That's not my point. Are you taking the Hawks over the Pacers? Yes. 
<laughs> if they're gonna be in the Eastern, if they're gonna be in the finals, then definitely yes. That that is necessarily the case. Wait, so you're backing Cyrus on this? No, I no, I'm saying he's saying that. I'm not. No, 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 I'm talking about you. You. No, I, you I said I would like to see the Hawks take. I, I think it is not impossible for the Hawks to take the Pacers to seven. Over under two and a half wins for the Hawks this series. Over under two and a half wins for the Hawks this, this playoffs. That's a good line. Uh, I, said, I said they're taking them seven, so I can't back out. I'm over. Them. Yeah. Over. Uh, I think the Pacers are unsure, honestly. I, I I think the worst thing that could have happened to them is what happened to them where they got out to this big lead. And everybody started talking about how they had already accomplished what they wanted to, which is replacing the Heat as the, the good team in the East. I'm going to tell you right now, the worst thing that can happen to the Pacers is they go down 2-1 and have to return to Atlanta. Because yeah, well, if they're down 2-1... With that fragile mind state, yep. I can see the Hawks winning. And by all by all reports, some problems in the locker room. That's yeah, I, I, can, I can I can see the Hawks kind <clears> of <throat> you know jumping on them, so to speak. And then all of a sudden, you're looking like, and you're a patient like, oh shit. Well, and you've got you've got a team in the Hawks with literally nothing to lose, and no. and a coach who actually, as opposed really to good. the last fifteen to twenty years. You've got a Hawks coach who might actually know what he's doing. That dude is good, cause that team beats teams sometimes. Yeah. What's the who's the last coach we had that knew what he was doing? Uh, Fratello? No, I'll get Woodson's. Uh, no. No. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Man can coach. Uh, no, 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 no. Incapable of coaching offense. Uh, no, you know what? I think Woodson has a plateau, which is like fifty, and he's out. He cannot coach. He's a, he's, a good, he's a good regular season coach. I watched him coach the Hawks. He cannot That's fine. coach. That offense. team's on 50 games. I'll, I'll give him that credit. But I feel like when you look at the current Hawks coach, I can't pronounce his name, you are looking at a guy that does X's and O's for his job. Yes. Like his system. That is, and well, he comes out of a system that yes. teaches that you. Runs, that runs and, and requires you to run plays, which is something that Woodson, it, when we ran plays that were successful, we never ran them again under Woodson. That was the, that was what drove me insane. The, the bigger problem the Hawks are going to have is in late game situations, they're going to need someone that can get his own shot. Yes. And sometimes the play will not work, and they don't have that. The question is, because in close games, I'm I'm a favor of the Pacers because they've got Paul George, but if the game is a blowout, I favor the Hawks because if the Hawks get a lead, they can make threes. And quite frankly, your our ability to make threes is probably better than your ability to make threes. I'm mean, not say out your hour. I guess I'm saying Hawks, but uh, you know the Hawks have a legit shot. Look, I don't I, think they can be the Bulls, but yeah, I, I won't I won't pretend to know anything about the Hawks' ability this year because I haven't watched. I, I've maybe watched five minutes of them play. Uh, they're, they're, I was serious when I said they're dead to me, but I, I will say that I, I know a little something about the Pacers' abilities this year, and especially late in the season. Mm -hmm. And they are—they're looking fragile. They've got problems in the locker room, and the Hawks are the kind of team, uh, especially given the coach that they've got this year, that mm -hmm. can push you. And I think the Pacers are vulnerable. You know, are, do I think the Hawks are going to definitely? Would I bet money on the Hawks to win the series? Absolutely not. I wouldn't even bet ten dollars on them to win the series. But I, I think this is—I think the Heat are smart to do what they're doing. I think the Heat are I, smart I, to be happy with I, second place in, in, I, I the bet, division. I would bet or in the ten, conference rather. I would bet ten that the Hawks could beat, but I think. Um, I, I, the Hawks can make threes, and they they've got a lineup where they can put five guys on the floor that can make a three. And when they spread you out, and all of a sudden here it becomes a non-factor because he's got a guard, you know, a center, a legit center that can make a three, which means when you come back on the defensive side, you're not kind of at a disadvantage. You know, a couple of threes here, a couple of threes there, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, and there could be a uh oh moment for the Pacers. Let's talk about the Western Conference really quickly. Uh, I, I've got OKC and San Antonio in the finals. It convinced me I, otherwise. Uh, it's hard. Um, it, it's really hard because as much as I'm, you know, I, I still just don't know that they can win as a team. Uh, it's really hard to pick against Durant. Um, I, could, I, 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 could I, I win all day. It, it's something about that team. I can't put my finger on it, but it seems like. Maybe they're front runners. I don't know. It's it's weird. That team just feels weird. That's the only way I can put it. I, I won't pick it. I won't pick them to win. Mm -hmm. But I, I will pick them. I'll, I'll pick them to be in the the finals. Except for, 
my heart wants the Clips to be in the finals. I, I want... I was never that big of a fan of, of the Clippers until Blake Griffin decided to work hard and improve his game. Hey, I, always, I always loved Chris Paul. But... Really? Really? I, I, yes, but I know. I, I, said the, I said the name. I said the name. It, it, I can only say it now that I'm no longer officially a Hawks fan, but I, I always loved Chris Paul, but Blake Griffin has really refashioned himself, and I have nothing but respect for what he's done. And I, I would love to see that team win. I, I don't know they can. I would love to see them win. I would love to see them get to the finals and play San Antonio. That would be a compelling series. I would watch every game of that series. You mean the Western Conference Finals? Yeah, 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 I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh, that, and that could happen too. You know. Yeah, I would love to see that happen. I don't. You know, I look down the rest of that uh, of the Western Conference, and I don't see anyone that that I would pick. I, I know Houston's got some game, but come on. Uh, you know, in 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 the words, in the almost incomprehensible words of of uh, one of my uh, acquaintances in debate, San Antonio will slow and steady them to death. Uh, I, I, will, I will say this: if the bracket opens right, you've got Howard in the middle, you've got Harden and a bunch of shooters that could give Miami problems, assuming that they make it to the the finals. They will not. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, if it, you don't know how it goes, because the West is, the West games are going to be tough. Memphis versus San Antonio is going to be a tough game. Uh, my burger joy has just arrived. Um, Are you but, joyful? Uh, I am joyful because um, I'm starving and I want to cook. But, um, you know, yeah, I I think the NBA playoffs in the West is going to be compelling. The East, not so much until maybe the semis. Can, can yeah. we just can we just get rid of – can we do something about the fact that the East is, is so crappy and the West is so much better? I don't know if we, – we talk about this all the time, but the eighth seed in the East is Memphis. They won 49 games this year. The well, eighth seed oh, – I'm sorry, the eighth seed in the West. Go ahead. I'll, I'll rant while you're gone. The eighth seed in the West is Memphis. They won 49 games. The eighth seed in the East is the Hawks. They won 37 games. They were seven games under 500 it, by one calculation, three and a half by another. I'm just going to say there are seven games – you know, they, they they lost seven more games than they won. <laughs> if Phoenix doesn't make the playoffs in the West, winning 47 games. Minnesota lost only one more game than they won, doesn't make the playoffs. The yeah. Hawks would have been three teams out of the playoffs in the West. You know what that means? The Knicks would have been four. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, it does mean that. maybe five, actually. Maybe five. Here's uh, the based, here's, based on tiebreakers. Here's what happens in, in East. I just want to point this out. Uh, we thought that Cleveland would be better. They tanked. We kind of thought the Pistons would be good because of that front court, but they suffer from Josh Smithism. They fail. It's God hate uh, you when yeah. you got Josh Smith. We, we we thought the Knicks would be at least a good 50 win team. They failed. Who thought that? So, uh, I think they're prognosticators on ESPN. God hates you when you got Carmelo Anthony. I've said it before. I'll say it again. God didn't hate Syracuse. They won a championship. Okay, well, as a, that's true. I mean, as a professional. Oh, God hates you when he makes money. That's <laughs> George Carl. <laughs> you probably made money in, a, in a Syracuse. Yeah, uh, that's, that's true. That's uh, true. But, but I feel like, you know, it's, you know, the teams in the East, those bottom tier teams are in a lot of kind of quasi-small markets in the sense that, they're not getting big time players, you know, unless you get them through the draft. Uh, who, who did Toronto have? I don't know. I know who Brooklyn has. I know who Chicago has. T Nate Ky Kyle Lowry, I think, is, a, is the All Star. Yeah, for them. I mean, look, I, I'm I'm sympathetic to your argument that some of those teams in the East that we thought would do better didn't. But look right. at who did do well. Right? Like Washington. I forgot about Washington. Washington won five more games than it lost. Yep. Right. Toronto is forty-eight and thirty-three, which is fine. It's a respectable. I, I mean, that's better than uh, that is that is considerably better. Some of these teams, than I think some of the than I think a lot of people thought they would do. So, like, and, and admittedly, Chicago lost Rose again, so they're yeah. not as good. Yeah. I think yeah. I think virtually everyone thought they would be the third team in the East, right? No, yeah, yeah. I think at the beginning, Sydney had them kind of high with Brooklyn. Yeah, you know, they get rid of. Uh, I thought, honestly, I thought Brooklyn ended up doing better than I thought they would because I honestly thought that that was a team that team was a nightmare waiting to happen. Because uh, I thought that team that team did better than I thought it would. So I, I think there were as many teams that overperformed 
uh, expectations, is underperformed expectations. I mean, look at the West. It, it, look at all those teams that are really good teams that had proud seasons as far as uh, their win totals go. But look at that team and look who, how they, what they've done in the draft and what they've got in stars. Golden State gets um, Curry. Uh, Portland has Leonard, Leonard and uh, Aldridge. Uh, Milwaukee, I'm sorry, Milwaukee. Dallas has uh, Dirk, who was an MVP in the finals. Uh, you know, they, they those teams have talent. Memphis has, you know, the same Cats characters that have been there every year since. So there's more continuity and more star power in the West. Uh, the East power is kind of concentrated. So I think therein lies kind of some of the problems. I mean, maybe, but, but like, look, look at what Brooklyn did to try to assemble all those big-name players, and they're still only winning 44 games. I mean, Dallas won 49 games with uh, uh, an incredibly depleted roster. Memphis mm -hmm. won 49 games with a depleted roster, and that's a depleted roster from Memphis. Sure, but they've also got to play the East, which means that they're going to get a lot of wins. I guarantee if you look at this, <clears throat> their record versus East Conference team is probably substantially better than the West. So... I, I think well, it has to be because otherwise, otherwise there would be a huge like gap, and there would be a bunch of teams at the bottom of the West with really bad uh, win-loss ratios, and that's not true. The very worst team in the West is Utah. They won 24 games. That's sure. better than or that's better than Orlando, who's the third worst team in the East at 23 games, and only slightly worse than Boston, who's the fourth worst team in the East at 25 games. So I think yeah, um, of course that's true. But I think if you look at the teams on the East, you've got teams that are building towards something better. Washington's starting to realize that backcourt that they've got is going to be really, really good. Al Jefferson goes to Charlotte. That team starts to play defense. That gives them a fighting chance. The Hawks kind of have – don't have an identity, but they're like, you know what? We're great at making shots. Let's go make shots. I don't know. So, I, what I said to uh, – your your friend who's a Knicks fan on Facebook is still true. I, the Hawks yeah, ownership yeah. group, the Hawks Hawks ownership group is not trying to win. That's why I stopped being a Hawks fan. This this Hawks ownership group is not trying to win. They are trying to do the minimum amount necessary to get some some people to come sit in the seats at Phillips when other teams that are popular show up. Uh, and and you can tell by okay. everything that they've done. When Hold there's on. a new ownership group, I will start being Hold a Hawks fan. Hold on. I, you know what? I, I <clears> agree with you. On, for this reason, if they were not committed to winning, they would not get Ferry and they would not get Button Heiser Button or something, uh, the coach that they have now, both of whom I think have done an excellent job of getting people off this roster who needed to be off this roster. And you've got a coach that you not said... Not coincidentally freeing up a bunch of money. Sure. And now you have a coach that you said with who, in your opinion, has been the best coach in the last 15 yes. years. On the cheap. Look... Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Yep. The shower rod. <laughs> they're they're not trying to tank. That's not my suggestion. They're just not trying to win. Well, I don't know how they can win unless they get someone in the draft. I don't think they. I don't think they're going to get anyone from free agency. Exactly. They are not trying. Look, that we can't get anyone from free agency because everybody knows that the ownership group's not willing to like actually spend money to get big time free agents. I don't know. If that's true. But I think. Because I think Ferry wouldn't take the job if he didn't have the ability to make substantial moves. Listen, I think you think, one of you the, think he was in a high demand elsewhere. Ferry, if he, people that come from that San Antonio tree are going to be in high demand. I, I, I think, mean, I, I think, I think our coach was not in particularly high demand elsewhere. I'm really happy we got him because I think he's confident. I, I, I think a lot. You know, you listen to the people on ESPN talk about the NBA and they talk about kind of like what people thought about the Hawks move when they made that deal, and they say, you know what? That's a great hire because he's a good coach. And you it's, hear a great, it's a great hire for the Hawks. It certainly would not have been a great hire for an actual top-tier team. Sure, but, like, think about what's his name from the Bulls. Like, you know, uh, Thibodeau. Thibodeau. No one knew Thibodeau was going to be this good. Yeah. You know, and so, you know. I guarantee I think, you Thibodeau's making substantially more money than the Hawks. Well, yeah, coaches. Well, yeah now he is, yes, but not when he first started. I don't know. That would be an interesting – whatever. Like, I – I'm not accusing the ownership group of trying to tank the team, the franchise. They have a they have a fiduciary interest in keeping the franchise valuable. I'm just saying they're not trying to win. I I feel like I don't want to get hoodwinked. I think my, my I think what the Hawks are doing is there's two things. Number one, there's no guarantee if you tank, especially because of the lottery, you get the number one pick. Yep. They, so, they don't, they're smart enough not to drive away the fans in droves. Yes. 
So yeah. now the question is, can you bring in guys, you know, can you find the next Harden? You know what I'm saying? Will you pay the next Harden? Sure, but Harden doesn't get paid that much. He gets like sixty million or something like that. But will you, will, can you find the next Harden? When in the draft, can you draft a guy that you know, you know, or will you make an aggressive move to trade up to get a guy yeah. that you desperately need? So and, I don't and, know. And can you That's convince, can, can you convince players who have a choice that they ought to come to the Hawks? Which is sad that that you would have to do that because NBA players ought to want to come live in Atlanta. No, they do live in Atlanta. They I, do live in Atlanta. It's true. Yeah. But they, do they want to play for the Hawks? I think the ownership needs to show they're committed to winning. The yep. one way you can do that, and, and this is what's happening with Cleveland now, is because although they're in dysfunction, the assumption is, is that players want to play with Kyrie Irving. That is true, but do they want to play with Kyrie Irving? And does Kyrie, Ir Kyrie Irving want to play in Cleveland? Right. I think that's a very open question. And see, if, I, if I'm the Atlanta Hawks and you have cap space, right, Here, here's a bold move you can consider. I think Kyrie Irvin, Irvin uh, opts out because he hates Cleveland. Melo can opt out, and you can sign both of them. No, just Kyrie. No, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. All right, I'm listening. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. Listen. God hates think, Carmelo Anthony. I, but I think that if – Not I, enough to make him poor, but – No, but I think that if you look at – if you look at what is available for you to get, to take this team to the next level, a front court of Millsap, Horford, and Mello with Irving at the point, that is a legitimate five, whoever you put it to, a legitimate starting five that you could reasonably argue that can either get past the second round of the playoffs and into a conference final. It, th that is reasonable. You think, you, you, think you can get Mello to come here? Uh, I don't know. I, it's a question of what Melo wants, right? Like, I think the thing I'm in the shocked, NBA I'm is, shocked by the number of people that think there's no way that he's ever going to leave New York. I mean, they, they think it's, I don't, I think it's a money making, issue or... Yeah, they're making a money issue, which they made with LeBron, which didn't work. Um, but I think in, in the NBA, it's package deals. Who wants to play with who, where, and what ownership group can get them the pieces to make them competitive? The question would obviously be, uh, I don't know if, like, you know, the Hawks have a ton of point guards. They need to get ready some. But if you could convince, say, Melo and Kyrie to join forces with Millsap and Horford, that's a legitimate team. Now, the question is, can you stop Melo from being a ball stopper? Uh, there is no one else out there that you could reasonably get if you're the Hawks besides Kyrie. But if you make an aggressive play, to get one of the kind of good kids in the draft and then say, we've got this center please, piece. We now have enough money, Carmelo, for you to play with. Let's just throw out some names. Starting five, Kyrie Irving, Marcus Smart, Melo, Millsap, Horford. That is the starting five that can challenge the Heat to get an A's cover five. You've got to work with the pieces that you get. No, that's true. I mean, that does sort of assume that there aren't other people out there trying to lure Ky Kyrie Irving because I think there oh, will there, be. There will be. I think if Wade is 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 unable to continue his career, which is likely considering these injuries, Kyrie is a perfect I, I, I think this is his year. I think it's done after this. Yeah, that's my that's, that's my conversation good. we'll have later. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But, All right. But we've well, talked about a lot of serious stuff, Joe. I know. It's crazy. I thought nothing was happening. Yeah, we gotta save, we gotta save some of this for the part of the year where it's just it's just regular season baseball and, and literally nothing interesting is happening. So I will have lots of stats to talk about, and I'll have a lot of this. Where's my burger joy menu? I, I'm, at that point, I'm gonna be ordering burger joy during the podcast. All right, kids, make it a combo. Well, we're gonna have a lot more to talk about because uh, things are actually gonna start happening in the uh, basketball playoffs. Uh, things are going to actually start happening in baseball that might actually matter. Although there's 162 games, maybe some, maybe something interesting will happen. Chinese donuts. China, uh, uh, Chinese. There are what we call Chinese donuts, but I'm having a hard time believing that Burger Joy actually offers them. Dude, they're so good. They're so good. Wow. Bro. Anyway, that's our 19th podcast. We hope uh, we get some people to watch it uh, and that you'll tune in next time when we have even more things to say. I doubt that the AGC's, AJC's coverage of the Falcons is going to get any better, uh, so it's very likely that the battery acid will continue to be drunk in my basement. Hey, if you listen to the podcast, ask us questions. We'll answer them on the podcast. That's right. 
don't like our podcast, we will come and fuck you up. <laughs> Eric will. I'm a professional. I'm a professional fuck-upper. <laughs> there you go. That well, is been said in another context. Anyway. Uh, damn it. All right, kids. I see, I see the way it goes. Or crab dinner. Or burger joy. <laughs> <laughs> We're out. <laughs>